Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I greet you this morning. I'm going to do your August the 4th just for today in a meditation. I hope you are excited about the day, looking forward to it. Okay, let's go ahead and get into that meditation. Now it's entitled, When is a secret not a secret? It sounds like a wonderful meditation. August 4th, when is a secret not a secret? Addicts tend to live secret lives. It is a great relief to get rid of all of our secrets and to share the burden of our past. That comes from the basic text, page 33. We've heard it said that we are as sick as our secrets. What do we keep secret and why? We keep secret those things that cause us shame. We may hold on to such things because we don't want to surrender them. Yet, if they're causing us shame, wouldn't we live more easily with ourselves if we were rid of them? Some of us hold on to the things that cause us shame for another reason. It's not that we don't want to be rid of them. We just don't believe we can be rid of them. They've plagued us for so long and we've tried so many times to rid ourselves of them that we've stopped hoping for relief. Yet still they shame us and still we keep them secret. We need to remember who we are, recovering addicts. We who tried so long to keep our drug use a secret have found freedom from the obsession and compulsion to use. Though many of us enjoy using right to the end, we sought recovery anyway. We just couldn't stand the toll our using was taking on us. When we admitted our powerlessness and sought help from others, the burden of our secret was lifted from us. The same principles applies to whatever secrets may burden us. Yes, we're as seekers, sick, sick as our secrets, excuse me. Let me repeat that. Yes, we're as sick as our secrets. Only when our secrets stop being secret can we begin to find relief from those things that cause us shame. Just for today. My secrets can make me sick only as long as they stay secret. Today, I will talk with my sponsor about my secrets. How many sponsors out there? <laughs> you and I and the rest of us. Let's take a moment of silence, followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Please and thank you. That's an amazing meditation. I have so many thoughts. So many thoughts. One, I do anticipate that I'll probably get some extra phone calls today. Uh -uh with some secret bearing. <laughs> oh, with some secret bearing, uh, I'll thumbs up and send an emoji. I'm in between clients all day. So <laughs> I just put that out there for those sponsees that are ready to bear secrets with me today. <laughs> Happens every year on August 4th. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. But you know, it is true. We do tend to live secret lives. And I think for me, the part of the meditation that just 
just hit my spirit and kind of took me to a different place. And you probably noticed I, I paused, I stumbled over a sentence. My mind went to something else when I read this particular part. I want to highlight it for you, and then I'll go on. Right here. We need to remember who we are, recovering addicts who tried so long to keep our drug use a secret, have found freedom from the obsession and compulsion to use. Now, let me tell you where my mind went with this. Because we all have heard uh, we're sick as our secrets, right? We really haven't heard a lot of dialogue about what type of things we keep secret and why we keep them secret. It, it seems kind of you know, obvious that we keep things secret that we're ashamed of or we don't want to be found out because it's going to cause us embarrassment, shame, uh, might even hurt us emotionally to have to watch someone we love realize that we're addicts or realize something about us that they didn't know. And now we have to deal with, are they going to accept us, love us, forgive us, reject us, abandon us, retaliate against us? There's so many things that go into, oh man, I don't want to get emotional, but there's just so many things that go into being a human being a human being rather than a human doing. We stay in that process of a human doing and in that striving, we begin to manipulate and try to figure out what it is we need to do to get the result that we're trying to get. In many cases, it's not that people, our, our desire is not to push people away. In many cases, we're doing what we're doing, keeping things a secret about what we're doing in order to not make them leave us. In order to, I don't want to say make them leave us. They don't have to leave us. But we're so afraid that they will leave us. And so we just keep it to ourselves. And many of us here have done some very heinous things. I mean, horrible. Horrible. And we get a second chance. We get to come into Narcotics Anonymous with a second chance. Some of us have criminal histories that we don't just share with anyone in the rooms. We share it with our sponsor, but we don't go around talking about everything we've done with everyone in the meeting because we realize there's still stigma attached to those criminal behaviors. But we can come in here and as long as we tell one other person and God, there's no need for us to even go into the gory details because we know that many of those things are sociably unacceptable. And a lot of the reason why we were using was so that we could deal with the own guilt and the our own guilt and shame about it. So when I got to this particular sentence that I highlighted, a couple of people came to mind. And I thought to myself, yep. Before they died, they hung out with loved ones. As soon as they got away from loved ones, and, and I won't say me, right? <laughs> I won't make it that personal, but I definitely have my own experience with this. 
um, as soon as they got away from the ones that, you know, had an expectation on how they should perform in public it, with the family, at a gathering with the family, whether it be family reunion, whether it was Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever it was, as soon as they got away from that atmosphere, beyond the acceptable stuff that people are using legally these days, weed and and uh, alcohol, and even popping bills, right? Once they got past, you know, that, that uh, what I would call the minor stuff, you know, the gateway stuff, the gateway drugs. Once they got away from the family and everyone's doing that stuff, that's okay. Let me go ahead and really get high, right? Because I can't believe I even showed up one. But I survived so-and-so. They always targeted me and talking about what I'm not doing. Can't believe I survived that. Let me go ahead and really get high. You know, and they get on one. The drug of choice. But here's the thing. That's what they thought they were doing. And they were trying to hide the fact that they're a drug addict from their family beyond what we call the sociably acceptable stuff. And they took that one next hit. And just when they thought it was about to be a regular nod, they died. Just when they thought it was going to be a regular upper they died. They overdosed. Huh? See, I'm seeing it differently as I'm reading this. Because if we have found freedom from the obsession and compulsion to use, that is a gift. But it's not a guaranteed one. It it don't last forever if you don't treat it right. In those in the throes of the disease of addiction, I believe they want out. I believe they want help. But that obsession and compulsion is so intense. They almost cannot help themselves if they get a chance, a moment of clarity to get somewhere, to get treatment, to get some help, to tell someone, to break the secret. I, I, I don't even want to think about it. How many trap houses, how many abandoned buildings, how many vehicles, tent cities, streets, bridges, some of us are out there in wanting to end the life that we know of using, but because of guilt and shame, and obsession and compulsion to use, when will the help ever come? See, that's where my my mind took me, was that, wow, there's people that really just continue to use because in order for them to stop using, they would actually have to admit, they don't, I don't even say admit they have a problem, they know they have a problem, right? But they would have to surrender And actually ask for some help. And in the asking, in the acknowledging that I'm out here like this, that one is a secret they want to take to their grave. How many people are still out there because of guilt and shame about actually being out there? That's where my mind took me. Okay, now, back to most of us sitting here listening reading this meditation. Call your sponsor. Now, I'm going to call my sponsor just because I think other people are going to call their sponsor today. (laughs) 
But I don't have no secrets. I, I really don't. I don't have any secrets that I'm keeping today. Um, I, I'm trying to think of, uh, I have some goals. I have uh, some doubts about a few things, but they're not secrets. I, I talk about what's going on, right? So in the spirit of what I think that you're going to do today, I'm going to do it too. <laughs> Okay, so today we want to put all sponsors on notice that your phone is about to blow up and you're going to hear some of the craziest stuff today. Just be prepared. Know that, you know, some of the conversations are going to start out with, I read the just for today today and I just felt like I needed to share the secret with you. And... <laughs> ah. I've been lying to you. I told you I got out of that abusive relationship and I'm still in it. <laughs> uh, I, I told you I was going to stop picking up stuff that don't belong to me in the store and I just stole some earrings. <laughs> I told you I was going to stop cheating on my mate and I just cheated on him again. Whatever it is, right? Get a hold of your sponsor and let the cat out the bag. Right? That's what it's telling us to do here. Because carrying around secrets is like walking around with boulders in a backpack and expecting that your back is not going to hurt. Of course it's going to hurt. Of course you're going to feel burnt. You're carrying around a boulder of a secret needlessly. So today, let's change that. I double dog dare you. For those of you across the pond, that just means I really dare you to talk to your sponsor about, well, let's say one mid-risk usually i'll say a low risk secret but i want to see you today if we can get a hold of our sponsors and share a mid-risk not the kind a thing that we said well i'm gonna take this to the grave right i mean i work yourself up to that i'm not talking about that but Something that should be pretty common, basic, have heard about it before. You're not unique. You just think you are that type of secret. What do you think? I think that's a good place to start with this ending. Just for today. Just for today. My secrets can make me sick at only as long as they stay secret. Today, I will talk with my sponsor about my secrets. I'll be thinking about you today as you move forward with that. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed laughing and talking with you. I hope that you, you already know, you're about to say it without my help. <laughs> Are you going to do it? Have a beautiful day on purpose. I intend to talk to you tomorrow.